one minute ago, something impossible began unfolding beneath the Cascade Range. GPS station MABA detected ground movement where none has existed for decades. Harmonic tremor signals rippled through bedrock at frequencies scientists recognize but hoped never to see. At Mount Baker, the Earth is rising. The deformation is subtle, measured in millimeters, but its implications are not. Why are multiple volcanoes inflating in sync across an entire volcanic arc? What force could coordinate an awakening across hundreds of kilometers of fractured crust? And if the pressure keeps building without release, what comes next? The Cascade Range stretches 1,100 kilometers from Northern California into British Columbia, a chain of volcanic giants fed by the Juan de Fuca plate grinding beneath North America at 40 millimeters per year. Mount Baker rises 3,286 meters above Northwest Washington, its summit draped in glaciers that hold more ice than most volcanoes in the contiguous United States. The volcano's last magmatic eruption occurred 6,700 years ago, scattering ash across what is now British Columbia and sending massive lahars down river valleys. Since then, Baker has been quiet, save for steam emissions that intensified in 1975, triggering an alert that faded when no eruption followed. Those emissions still hiss from Sherman Crater today, a reminder that the volcano never truly sleeps. When one cascade volcano stirs, others may follow. They tap the same deep magmatic source, the melting zone where oceanic crust descends into the mantle. But what seismometers detected at Mount Baker differs fundamentally from routine tremors. At 0347 UTC, automated systems at the Cascades Volcano Observatory triggered an alert that woke duty scientists from sleep. GPS station MABA, one of 12 continuously operating stations monitoring the volcano's flanks, recorded 4.2 millimeters of vertical displacement in 24 hours. For a volcano showing near-zero deformation for decades, the change was stark. Within hours, three additional stations confirmed the pattern, each registering upward movement radiating from beneath Sherman Crater like ripples from a stone dropped in still water. Millimeter scale changes sound trivial to anyone unfamiliar with volcanic monitoring. They are not. When molten rock accumulates thousands of meters underground, it exerts immense pressure on surrounding crust, forcing the surface to bulge. The rate matters as much as magnitude. Sudden inflation signals a critical threshold. The moment magma stops simply accumulating in storage and begins actively migrating toward the surface. This is when dormant volcanoes transition to restless ones. The alert reached volcanologists within minutes of the automated threshold being crossed. By dawn, satellite data was being pulled from archives stretching back years. Teams began cross-referencing GPS time series with seismic records, gas measurements, and thermal imagery. The question driving every analysis was immediate and urgent. Was this a false alarm, a sensor malfunction, or had Mount Baker truly entered a new phase of unrest? Station Shook, 12 kilometers southeast of the summit, began recording a low, continuous hum. The waveform oscillated at 1.8 hertz, holding steady for hours. Harmonic tremor. This is the sound of magma in motion. Harmonic tremor is the resonance of pressurized fluids forcing through cracks and conduits. When gas-rich magma ascends, it drives pressure waves like air through an organ pipe. At Mount Baker, the 1.8 hertz signal suggested a resonating column roughly 300 meters long, shallow enough to be alarming. The tremor persisted 18 hours before fading. By day three, additional seismometers detected episodic bursts at 2.1 to 2.4 hertz, each lasting 20 to 40 minutes. Magma was testing pathways, probing weaknesses. Each burst represented a pulse as fresh material pushed upward from depth. What came next shocked even the scientists. Sulfur dioxide emissions from Sherman Crater jumped from 50 tons per day to over 280 tons within 72 hours. 
hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide spiked in tandem, a chemical signature of magma degassing at shallow depth. Gas stations around the crater recorded changes in real time, transmitted via satellite. The gas ratios told the story. Rising sulfur dioxide indicates ascending magma. When carbon dioxide rises alongside it, the source is likely deeper than 5 kilometers. But the rapid increase suggested something immediate, a magma body already in the shallow crust, now heating and pressurizing. Thermal infrared cameras detected surface temperature increases of 12 degrees Celsius. New steam vents opened along fractures dormant since the 1970s. One fumarole began emitting a plume visible from Bellingham, 50 kilometers west. But this was only the first warning. On day five, senior USGS scientists gathered at the Cascades Volcano Observatory. They brought seismic data, gas measurements, GPS time series, thermal imagery. Spread across a conference table, the evidence converged. Sustained inflation, harmonic tremor, escalating gas emissions, rising surface temperatures. Together, they painted a clear picture. Mount Baker was transitioning from dormancy to unrest. Models estimated magma chamber depth and volume change, a source 6 to 8 kilometers beneath Sherman Crater, inflating at 0.4 million cubic meters per month. That is an Olympic swimming pool every six hours. If the trend continued, the reservoir would exceed mechanical limits within months. Enhanced monitoring would begin immediately. Satellite radar imagery confirmed what ground sensors detected. INSAR data from Sentinel-1 satellites revealed a dome-shaped deformation pattern centered on Baker's summit. The inflation extended 8 kilometers in diameter, with peak uplift of 11 centimeters between August and November. INSAR compares radar images from space taken at different times. When ground moves, radar phase shifts create interference patterns measurable to millimeters. The technique revolutionized volcano monitoring, especially in remote regions. Concentric fringes radiated from the summit, each color band representing 28 millimeters of uplift. The pattern matched classic models of magma accumulation, a pressurized sphere expanding beneath elastic crust. But the data revealed something more disturbing. Similar patterns appeared at other Cascade volcanoes. Mount Rainier showed 3.4 centimeters of uplift. Mount St. Helens registered 2.1 centimeters along its northern flank. Mount Hood displayed 1.6 centimeters on southern slopes. Even Glacier Peak showed movement in archived data. The timing was impossible to ignore. Each volcano began inflating within weeks of the others. The synchronization suggested a common driver, something deeper than individual chambers, regional magmatic processes, operating at crustal or mantle depths. For scientists, this was unprecedented. Isolated unrest is common. Simultaneous inflation across an entire arc is not. And the signs were already spreading. The magma chamber beneath Mount Baker sits 6 to 10 kilometers deep, containing andesitic magma mixed with interconnected dikes. Pressure is governed by magma influx from below and rock strength above. When fresh magma arrives from the mantle, it injects heat and volatiles. Temperature difference drives convection, mixing and accelerating degassing. Gas bubbles expand, increasing internal pressure. Stress models suggest the crust can sustain 0.5 million cubic meters per month for 6 to 12 months before failure. Beyond that, fractures propagate, opening pathways for ascent. Whether that leads to eruption or stalls at shallow depth cannot yet be predicted. The current expansion rate is unsustainable. The driving force is basaltic magma rising from the mantle wedge, hotter and less viscous than resident andesite. When basalt intrudes cooler magma, it transfers heat rapidly, destabilizing the system. Temperature contrast can reach 200 degrees Celsius. Gas exsolves within hours, carbon dioxide first, then sulfur dioxide. As gas exsolves, magma volume expands 10 to 30 percent, translating to increased pressure. 
If gas production exceeds escape through fractures, pressure builds exponentially, and every system downstream begins to fail. The scientific literature offers warnings and reassurance. At Mount St. Helens in 1980, inflation preceded catastrophic lateral blast. At Yellowstone, the caldera rose 25 centimeters between 2004 and 2010 without eruption. Campi Flagre near Naples has inflated over 3 meters since the 1950s without erupting. Mount Cleveland in Alaska showed rapid inflation in 2011, followed by moderate eruption within weeks. Statistical analysis reveals a sobering truth. Roughly 40% of inflation events lead to eruptions. The other 60% subside. But monitoring systems were already being overwhelmed. Emergency meetings convened within 48 hours. Representatives from the FAA, Washington Emergency Management, and Whatcom County attended via secure link. Enhanced protocols activated immediately. Additional seismometers, GPS stations, gas monitoring flights. Each seismometer required helicopter deployment. Each GPS station cost $25,000. Each gas flight, $8,000. But missing critical signals was unacceptable. Scientists from Alaska Volcano Observatory, Italy's INGV, and Japan Meteorological Agency were consulted. INSAR data was shared with European Space Agency analysts. Seismic waveforms uploaded to international databases. Gas data cross-referenced with NASA satellite measurements. Volcanic crises do not respect borders. Eruption scenario modeling began in parallel. USGS volcanologists modeled outcomes if magma continued ascending. Scenarios ranged from effusive lava flows to catastrophic explosive eruptions. Ash column heights based on historical analogs. A moderate VEI-3 eruption could loft ash to 10 kilometers, disrupting Pacific Northwest aviation, depositing centimeters on Bellingham and northern Seattle. A VEI-4 event could send ash to 20 kilometers, affecting traffic to Spokane. Economic losses projected in hundreds of millions from aviation alone. Agriculture in Skagit Valley would face crop damage. Water supplies could be contaminated. But the most immediate hazards would not be ash, they would be lahars. Mount Baker supports 114 square kilometers of glacial ice. When volcanic heat melts it, floods entrain rock and debris, transforming into lahars traveling tens of kilometers. River valleys, the Nooksack, Baker, Skagit, are home to thousands. Pyroclastic flows within 8 kilometers of the summit would destroy everything, traveling over 100 kilometers per hour. Lahar travel times calculated. Sherman Crater to Concrete, 45 to 60 minutes. Communities like Glacier and Mabel Falls, 20 minutes or less. Evacuation windows narrow. But the ground had one more secret. More than 140,000 people live within 30 kilometers of Mount Baker. Evacuation time estimates require 6 to 12 hours under ideal conditions. Shelter capacity could accommodate 30% of at-risk population. The remainder would self-evacuate or shelter in place. State Route 542, the primary evacuation route, is two-lane and narrows in several locations. A single accident could trap thousands. Electrical grid transmission lines cross hazard zones. Ashfall over 5 centimeters would short transformers. Water treatment in Bellingham draws from the Nooksack, which drains Baker's slopes. Lahar contamination would overwhelm filtration within hours. Communication towers on ridgelines could be destroyed. Medical helicopter evacuation would be grounded during ashfall. Every system was vulnerable. County emergency managers acknowledged what analysts knew privately. Current evacuation infrastructure cannot handle a full-scale eruption. Systems designed for floods and storms, not geologic catastrophes over hours. Training exercises in 2023 revealed coordination gaps, communication protocols broken down, resource requests delayed or lost. The observatory updated Baker's alert level from normal to advisory, elevated unrest but no immediate threat. Aviation codes remained green. Public messaging emphasized vigilance without panic. Media briefings stressed that most inflation episodes do not lead to eruption. Local residents faced a different reality. Sarah Kellerman, a teacher in Maple Falls, has lived 18 kilometers from Mount Baker for 30 years. 
She remembers the steam plumes of 1975, when scientists thought eruption was imminent. It never came. Now, watching morning fog lift off the valley, she wonders if the mountain is finally waking. Her classroom sits near the nooksack. If a lahar comes, we have minutes, maybe. Not enough time to get everyone out. Her words echo broader unease. People trust the science, but understand its limits. And those limits were becoming clear. Volcanic prediction remains imperfect. Monitoring detects unrest, but forecasting whether unrest leads to eruption, when and how large, lies beyond current capabilities. Some volcanoes inflate for years without erupting. Others erupt with minimal warning. Inflation does not equal imminent eruption. That message is repeated in every briefing. Iceland emphasizes preparedness over prediction. Japan's monitoring network is the world's densest but cannot eliminate surprise. The Cascades face a different challenge. Eruptions are rare enough that collective memory fades. Right now, the Cascade Range is experiencing an awakening unlike anything in modern monitoring history. Multiple volcanoes inflating in sync, seismic signals consistent with magma movement, gas emissions rising sharply. The science is clear, the system is restless. What remains unknown is whether this unrest will culminate in eruption or whether magma will stall, cool, and subside. Scientists are watching, interpreting, preparing. They have tools to detect warning signs, but not certainty to predict outcomes. Mount Baker, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, each name carries geologic weight and potential for sudden violence. For now, the volcanoes breathe, the ground rises, and the question lingers, unanswered and urgent. How long can the pressure build before something breaks?